Damon Vickers is a man that I met, I don't know, about a year ago, I think. He's the managing director of Nine Points Capital uh, Partners, and he is also the author of The Day After the Dollar Crashes, a survival guide for the rise of the New World Order. That doesn't sound happy to me. Damon is here. Um, you line out... Hi, Damon. How are you? Hey, good to see you again. Um, you line out um, a 15-day calendar here. China starts with, China says no more bonds. At the end, it's life as you understand it. I mean, business and money and everything else, as we understand it, is totally different. Two weeks later. Mm. Okay, right? Yes. All right. America, I want you to see, <laughs> Damon's actually not the unreasonable one. I had a guy who said, oh, it'll happen in three days. Three. Um, you've taken a whole 15. The key is, when does it catch up to you? Now, let's start with this. China says no more bonds. Show me how, because this is the premise, this is the trigger, show me how realistic this can be in the next 12 months. China's just starting to say no. So their opening act would be to, to really just say no more bonds. And, and they're not buyers okay, and of this, our bonds. And this is where, um, when, when they say no more bonds, um, this is why Europe is going towards the austerity. They're cutting back because they have to signal to the rest of the world, okay, we're serious. We, we, we know we can't spend like this. Right. right? And, 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 it's, and it's really showing up in Europe first, and it's, we're looking at the future. Okay. Europe, Europe is our future. All right. Day number one, China says no more bonds. Day two, what happens on Wall Street? Markets are spooked. A little eerie, uh, uh, quiet, but there's a, there's a kind of a hush all over Wall Street. It's surprising. Okay. Definitely Wall Street is a little surprising. Odds that this happens in the next year? I, I, you have no idea. I think very good, and I, okay. I, think, it's, I think it may already have happened. Okay. Um, the next day, day three, it's the same, but now there are rumors. What are the rumors? The rumors are, I guess, of the instability in the markets, the instability in the bond market, and really, you know, really what's next, and that people are starting to worry about maybe a panic. Or Pre anything. President said anything at this point? Uh, might have gone on TV, made a speech, okay. uh, uh, that they'll find ways to continue the economy strong and sound. You know, that's typical that, Obama speak. Right, seeing that it's Friday, Saturday, he knows that the kids are at soccer, so yeah. really, it... it if, knowing the government, they just try to get to Friday. And everything will just magically change over the weekend. Right. Sunday, the Asian markets open, and what happens? Asian markets open, and the Asian markets are in free fall. Uh, major declines. Every crash that we've had, uh, whether it's the 87 crash or even the instability that we saw in 08, it really opens up in Asia. Asia Asian markets are, da are way down. Okay. Then our stock market, or no, our dollar is down. You say our dollar is worth on Sunday. This started on Wednesday. On Sunday, if you had $100 in the bank, you now have $90 in the bank of value. Right. Correct? Yep. Um, gold is up $200 an ounce. Easily. Easily. Yep. Monday, the Dow opens. What happens? Dow plunges 900, maybe 1,000 points in 20 minutes. Uh, well, markets have to close. Markets close, yeah. It's just overwhelming. People, okay. are in sh people are in shock walking around. and <laughs> You're saying the market closes in 20 minutes. Okay. Europe raises their interest rates. What does that mean? Well, it's a scramble for liquidity. It, I mean, it's all about liquidity. It's all about where do you find the real liquidity globally. That's, okay, so hang on just a second. Problem. So, you know, so, so Europe raises, raises their interest rates. That means they have debt. They need the money. So they say, we're going to give you... Um, we're going to give you a higher yield on your bonds, right? We're going to give you more interest. We're going to give you more interest. If you invest in Europe, and what happens is they're sucking the money out of here. Everybody's starting to freak out about us. And so Europe tries to position themselves as a good investment. Hey, invest over here. We'll give you more if you come over here, right? Right. You're trying to, you're trying to compensate the investor for the risk of making the investment. And as the markets get riskier, interest rates rise as Western economies <laughs> scramble for liquidity. Okay. Day seven, we're the first week in. Day, sec day seven, wait until you see what day 15 looks like for you next.
Erica, I want to introduce you again to Damon Vickers, Managing Director of Nine Points Capital Partner and author of The Day After the Dollar Crashes, a survival guide for the rise of the New World Order. Damon spells out a hypothetical two weeks here that we're going through. Uh, and when we get to day 16, 17, 18, you will not recognize your country. China says no more bonds. Spooked on Wall Street. Rumors are happening. Then the Asian markets start to fall. The Dow plunges. Markets close in the first 20 minutes in week one. Markets are unable to, or, uh, to open. Emergency Fed meetings are happening. They open at 1045. Is it over? The next day, it's all quiet. The market starts to rally. How, what do you mean by a rally on that day? We just, we went through this. I mean, I can see CNBC cheering. Oh, yeah. The dope's just going, it's over. Invest. Now's a good time to buy, right? You can definitely see it. Oh, yeah, yeah it's happening. And, uh, and, you know, people people buy dips. So the market sells off 900 they points. They say this is the bottom. That's a chance to buy some buy Got it. downtrend. The next day, it's stable. Then Friday, you say the dollar plunges. 10 to 15. Uh, didn't it already plunge? Dollar already plunged, didn't it? Yeah, 10%. So now we're an additional 10 to 15%. Yeah, the so trend no persists. The selling persists. And that's what surprises people as we, as we move towards the weekend is that the actions of the Fed, the actions of the government to quiet the markets right. are not working. Okay, so this is, we've seen this before where, oh, it's all fixed, it's all fixed. And people get euphoric and they're like, hey, because they want to believe. And then it just, because it's gravity. It comes down. Market forces are generally always stronger than the government's ability to contain okay. them. In your scenario, it's lucky because now it's Saturday. So the Fed has the weekend, has a Saturday where they can meet. They meet, then they raise the uh, interest rates, 5 to 6%. What does that mean? They're trying to attract buyers. It, again, it's the, the scramble for global liquidity. That's what this whole game is all about. And so to entice investors to take higher levels of risk, they've got to raise interest rates. They raise interest rates again, and in the book, we lay it out that there, there are no buyers. Okay. And then you say, day 13, lucky 13, Monday, you say it's global meltdown. You say the Dow falls 3,000 points in one day. But this is not just the Dow. This is every market. So, so resources are just being destroyed everywhere, right? Well, it's, it's the, the, the value of, of most global assets in the world have been, have been driven up by leveraged and hypothecated money. So a collapses in equities or collapses in real estate are really just markets finding their own Correct. value. It's gravity. It's gravity. Okay, then the IMF and the G20 meet. There's a total restructure of all debt. This is a big day. After this happens, this is a big day because spooky dude has his new world order. Total restructure, a new global order. Explain what this is. Well, there's a lot of debt in the world amongst Western Europe and the United States. It's, it's massive. It's an amount of debt that can, can never be never. paid. Never. And so you, we get to the point where basically you, it's... Just you, clear all the chips off and say we're starting to it's what happens in a bankruptcy. And you're saying this is on global television in different languages all around the earth. We're all watching it at once. And they're saying there's a new global order, okay, a right? A new global order, a new world order. That's when you're saying, that's when the public panics all over the world, because they don't like this. And that's not just America. Nobody likes this. The banks, people start breaking into the banks. I want my money. The ATMs are now out of cash. There's nothing left. Food, it's beginning to look now like a hurricane. You know, a hurricane comes and, you know, hey, there's going to be a heavy snowstorm in New England, and all the food is gone off the shelves. You say... It's there. And this is where the real trouble for the public begins, right? Correct. Okay. Now, let's, let's, go, from, let's go from there. Um, in our next break, I'm going to bring in my good friend Brad Thor, um, who will take it from there. What happens? And what are the forces that want this to happen? Next. It's not, it's not really a happy show today. It's, uh, it is a truthful show. It is a show of the, uh, the possibilities of what's coming. What will stop these things from coming 
is uh, an opening of people's eyes. I was talking to Damon Vickers. He's managing director of Nine Points Capital Partners. And uh, also joining him now is Brad Thor, novelist. His new book, The Athena Project, is out November uh, 23rd. You have, um, uh, you have done, uh, what was the red thing? that you The analytic red cell program for the yeah. Department of Homeland Security. Yeah, he's one of these guys who is in a think tank or you know, war gaming with the government for a while. Um, the thing that people always miss uh, when I talk to people who are in finance, high finance, you know, Goldman Sachs or anything like that, they'll always say, oh, well, they, no, we've got systems to protect. But they never watch their back door. They never watch. They don't recognize the radicals that are all around in our own government, in our own country, in other governments, other countries. And the, and the number of people that would like to see capitalism and the free market and America fail, it's a dog pile right now. And to totally change the order of the world. Damon, you're sighing. No, it's a complex problem. You have a growing pop global population of people that are disenfranchised, a growing, po growing, growing segment of the global population that is unemployed, mainly in the westernized economies. What do you do with the idle that have too much time on their hands you to, to conceive? revolutions and get organized yeah and exactly. that's part of the plan is to get as many people idle as possible we talk about cloud pivot you and i've talked about it many times yeah. this idea of overwhelming the system as a matter of fact one of the books that you had held up the coming insurrection talks a lot about encouraging uh these people on the left to uh, actively commit welfare fraud student aid fraud uh home mortgage fraud Everything we're seeing now, this is not, you know, this is not some crazy conspiracy theory. If you look at what these people are saying, they are do they're telling us everything they're going to do. Yeah, they're doing it. And they you know what's amazing is they don't have to they don't have to cower in the shadows anymore. Do you believe there's a star chamber anywhere and they're all getting together and they're like, "Well, now this is what we will do." Do you believe that? That they're a cent centralized authority where they conceive yeah. the they the direction conceive of that the hatch world? this plan, yeah. Uh, no, I actually do believe that that exists. Uh, you do? I know it exists for a fact. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Ooh. Okay. Who is it? <laughs> I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I have been found out. Edit the tape. Um, here is the, uh, here, here's oh, the no. thing. I mean, I think, I think George, uh, let, me, let me rephrase this because maybe we're saying the same thing. Maybe we're not. Um, and what I believe is George Soros absolutely has a, a plan um, in his own interest. I don't think a lot of these people don't think that they're evil. They think they're doing the right thing. Um, you know, and in that line are the people that are currently in power. But they're also communists. There are also groups of, of other people that, that have a plan. And they're all just kind of moving together. I don't think, I don't think the, Obama's... Well, I can't we, say can, we can... Uh, I live in Seattle now, but I'm originally from New York. And driving up the, the east side, I come by the United Nations. And so the idea of bringing the world together, of, of having a direction for the world that is positive and good, whereby, whereby changes can be made on the world's behalf mm -hmm. to improve the, the, and benefit the world, this is not a unique idea. And there, there have been people that have, that have kind of helped to orchestrate that in a positive fashion. I think over time it got corrupted maligned and i'm talking about the cia i'm talking about the uh perhaps some of the uh, brad i know you're going to disagree with this because you're a fan <laughs> but of. but it had CIA. it had noble intent at least in the beginning uh, yeah you know what i have always i agree with you that some of these people think they're doing the right thing right. i actually think liberalism to a large degree the real hardcore leftist progressive stuff yeah. is an impulse control disorder this inability to look at someone and not say i want to help them and take this person's money to help them and to move things around. The, the inability to let that person find their own way, maybe with a little bit of help, because of course that's part of our Judeo-Christian heritage, is that those that are truly, truly the, the most unfortunate among us, not because of their financial level, but if they, they have a handicap or this person's... You know, when we see the overwhelming amount of people on government assistance in this country, and I was talking to you before we came on the show about how much I love Broke, and I think it's your best book ever. And I'm reading in there and I'm seeing how Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, it's 56% of our federal budget. It's the first time I'm seeing all this stuff laid out like this. 42 cents of every dollar the federal government is paying is borrowed. 42 cents of every dollar. So I look at this and I say, we absolutely cannot have any more sacred cows in this country. We, can, we no. have to put these entitlement right. programs on right. the block if we want to save this nation.